Hi, good afternoon. My name is Magate Mkhapele. I'm the civil principal legal practitioner at Johannesburg uh, local office, and that is Legal in South Africa. Uh, today we're going to speak about wills and explain what is actually a will. Uh, a will is a document in which the testator, the testator is the person drafting the will, explains as to what should happen to his property or assets uh, at the time of his death or her death. Uh, a will is important because uh, if a person doesn't leave direct, directives as to what should happen to their property, then the property will devolve to the next of kin, that is the blood relatives according to the interstate succession. And the wife and all his children will be entitled to inherit. Uh, if ever a child has died leaving behind issue, that is children, then the children will inherit in strippers, which means that they will inherit on behalf of the portion that was supposed to be inherited by their deceased parent. So it is always important that a person should state clearly what should happen to the property that he so amassed during his lifetime. Because if you don't, you risk that your property will devolve to your less favorable pe uh, people, people who tormented you during your lifetime, people who did not take care of you uh, during your lifetime, will be entitled to inherit, even though you did not wish them to inherit. And people uh, are always thinking that if you just say it by word of mouth, that I don't want a certain child of yours to inherit, then automatically your wishes will be uh, followed upon your death. And that is not the case because in terms of the law, a will should be in writing and a will should be uh, done in front of two witnesses who are present at the same time with the testator, the person who's drafting the will. And should a person drafting a will not be able, uh, be illiterate, not be able to write, then they can make a mark or a thumbprint. But if they are signing by using a word, a mark or a thumbprint, then they need to append their mark or a thumbprint in front of those two witnesses and a commissioner of oath who must append certificate commissioning that the identity of the person who drafted the will and that the will was drafted uh, in the presence of those two competent witnesses. And further, the commissioner must ascertain to himself, because this person is illiterate, whether the person understands the wording uh, of the will and actually be able to satisfy himself that the person, the wording of the will uh, reflect the true intention of the testator, that is the person who's drafting the will. And I believe that there are further questions that you have uh, from the members of the public, but before we go there, I just want to mention that a will can be amended at any time after being uh, reduced into writing by the testator. And when the testator amends the will, they can amend by scratching out certain sections in the will or provisions that they don't want, but they must append their signature next to the amendment. And those two competent witnesses must uh, sign next to the signature of the testator. It is not a matter of uh, force that the uh, two witnesses who signed the initial will should be the same witnesses who signed to the amendment, which happens at a later stage. As long as there are two competent witnesses, they can sign. And if the amendment is done by a person who's going to sign the will by the use of a mark, or a thumbprint, the commissioner of oath must also append the, the certificate uh, attesting that this is the testator and the testator understand the uh, correction that they are making on the wheel, uh, uh, on the very same next to the uh, deletion or the amendment. Further, a will can be amended by a codicil. A codicil is just an annexure or a schedule which will be attached to the will to uh, make that amendment. And you may uh, go on to the questions. Okay, so we've received a few questions from social media. 
The first is, what is the difference between a will drawn up by a bank versus one drawn up by an attorney? Uh, the difference uh, would be mostly, uh, if not all, the wills that are drawn up by banks, the banks will appoint themselves as executors of the will. And an executor of the will stands to uh, get a benefit after administering the estate. There is a percentage which is provided for in the wills act, which the, uh, the executor will uh, get remunerated with. Mm -hmm. And an attorney might charge you an amount upfront uh, for drafting a will, and you are at liberty to elect your own uh, executor in the will. Mm -hmm. You might elect your uh, friend, you might elect a member of your family, any person that you believe will best discharge your uh, uh, needs or your intentions as drawn up in the will. Mm -hmm. And further, uh, if ever there is no income to be derived from the will uh, that might satisfy the bank, they might at a later stage after appointing themselves as executors uh, withdraw from uh, uh, being executors. Now it is a will without an executor. Now it is the duty of the master and beneficiaries to check who will be the executor of the will. Uh, something that you might have showed from uh, the initial stages of drafting the will by appointing your own trusted person to be an executor of your own will. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the difference that I, I find, but uh, the contents of the will still remains the same. They are templates. The, uh, actually, uh, the act stipulates what uh, needs to be in a will. And some, there are certain things that you might uh, put in a will if you are not uh, a trained person that might not be able to be executed uh, at the end of the day as long as uh, something is illegal and or it's contra bonus mores contra bonus mores simply means that it is uh, against public policy or the interests of uh, society if ever there are provisions in your will with a uh, unlawful or contra bonus mores unfortunately same will never be entertained by the cause that will uh, be it on that We've also had a question from the public to take them through the template of a will. You do have okay. a template here. Yes, we've got a template which you can easily find on Legal Aid South Africa's website. It will uh, clearly indicate to you the first thing, that is the full names of the testator. The testator is the person who's drafting the will and the ID number of the testator. And further, it explains in brackets that, that the person must be 16 years and, or older to be able to conclude a valid will. Uh, it was ac actually uh, further explained whether you are married, unmarried, male, female, and the address at which you are living. Uh, further, there is a, a, a clause which is revocation of former wills. You always have to revoke former wills if ever the contents of your will is going to be contrary to what other uh, wills that you have completed in uh, previous, previously. Mm -hmm. That is the most important uh, uh, one that I was just alluding to, appointment of executor. You have got the freedom to appoint any person that you trust to be the executor of your estate. Mm -hmm. And then paragraph three. Uh, it's nomination of a guardian. This is provided for where there are minor children. If you wish to appoint a trusted person to be the guardian and will be best suitable to look after the interests of your interests of your minor children, it, that is the uh, a position where you have to appoint that person there. And if you appoint that person, nobody will go against that person unless if the person is found to be of. Uh, not good standing, a person who doesn't qualify uh, or who was declared by court not to be uh, suitable to look after minor children. And then there is a issue of security. If you are going to appoint a family member, you, have, you will have to uh, relieve them of the burden of furnishing the master with security uh, in case they are going to uh, be executors. But for it, any other person uh, that you appoint who you think might be tempted to uh, misappropriate the properties or the assets of the your estate you can uh, request the, ma the master to put security as provided for by legislation and at the bottom of the page it's a 
provision for the person drafting the will, that is the testator, and the witnesses to sign. It is always advisable for each and every page to be signed and the signatures to appear next to the last line for to safeguard against people at a later stage in setting certain things that were not uh, put by the testator. Uh, legacy, this uh, happens to uh, it's uh, under legacies, those are cash uh, assets of the estate. You can nominate who must get what specific amounts in the will, and then you can appoint your heirs to the entire estate uh, also. And further, there is uh, something which is safeguarded uh, in the will to protect the children after inheriting uh, your inheritance, if you don't want it to form part of any marital regimes that they may enter into, so that you protect that property uh, under the names of your intended beneficiaries or uh, descendants. Because now we know life uh, is like that, people get divorced on a daily basis. So if you want uh, a certain property not to go out of the family line, you can protect it. Uh, from being part of any marriage. And then the Commissioner's of Oaths Declar Certificate uh, is just provided here, but uh, it only is needed when a person who is signing the will is using a mark or a thumbprint. And lastly, if the person uh, can't uh, use the mark or a thumbprint is requesting another person to sign on their behalf. You can also do that. You can sign my will on my behalf, but I must be present, two witnesses, competent witnesses present, and a commissioner of oath present at that signing of the will. Another question that we've received, which I think is quite a popular one, can your witnesses be beneficiaries in your will? Yes, uh, uh, a witness can be a beneficiary, but there must be a qualification. Uh, when we uh, started with the conversation, I said there must be two competent witnesses to sign. As long as the witness is a, a third witness uh, and the only one who is going to inherit as a witness, and the other two witnesses, competent witnesses, are not beneficiaries in terms of the will that person can still inherit. But if there are only two witnesses and the one is a beneficiary, then that person uh, is not entitled to inherit in terms of that will, but that doesn't uh, invalidate the will. The will remains in force, but the person is disqualified from the will. And how old do beneficiaries need to be? Is there a particular age? Of witnesses, how old do witnesses need to be? Uh, if my mother says me well, any person above the age of 14 can be a witness to a will. Okay. And if you're married in community of property, what does that mean for your will? Uh, if you are married in community of property, the will will only be operational towards your half uh, 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 of the estate because the other half doesn't, is not yours, it divorces to the other uh, uh, spouse in terms of the marital regime. And then finally, the last question we got, once you have a will in place, so let's say you visit Legal Aid South Africa during Wills Week, we help you to draft a will and it's witnessed and it's signed and everything's in order. What do you do with it then? Where do you put it? What, what do you do? Uh, the most common place where people store their wills is in safety uh, deposit uh, uh, boxes in a bank. Mm -hmm. You can put it in your, in your safe at home. You can... As long as you can store it uh, so that upon your death uh, it can be found, is then that it can be taken to the master of the high court to be registered upon death. And because the will only uh, uh, starts uh, operating after the death of mm. the testator. Mm. And you sh should you let your beneficiaries know or the witnesses know where the will is? Any person that you trust, you can inform any person that you trust where the will is stored that, uh, and you know that uh, the person will be nearby when uh, the uh, unforeseen or uh, the eventualities of death uh, uh, comes uh, to mm -hmm. meet you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Is there any other information that the public should know about wills? Uh, the public should just uh, make sure that uh, they draft wills. It doesn't have, people have got this uh, perception or misconception that only rich people uh, draw wills. As long as you've got property, you've got, people can be collectors of coins, which at a later stage might be worth uh, something. It's better to have a will. You can even have a will to direct people how they should conduct your funeral. That is the power that you've got to can still direct how your remains are disposed of and how your property should devolve and to who should it devolve to. That is the power that you've got and it's better that you exercise it. Don't let other people, third parties, the legislature or whoever in us the laws to decide on your behalf of how your property should devolve. I thank you. And for further information, people can just contact any office of legal in South Africa. They will be contacted and advised accordingly.